to introduce our 2018 Distinguished American Award. Please welcome Vice President of the Walter Camp Football Foundation, Tony Mortali. Thank you, Kevin. In the NFL today, the dual threat quarterback is a defensive nightmare. As he drops back, he's able to feel the pressure around him and the pocket is collapsing. He prepares to fire his strike downfield, but is able to pull it in and takes off running. Dodging defenders, he scampers for a first down or even a touchdown. Except, this is 1971 and the quarterback is Archie Manning. Archie played college ball at Ole Miss from 1968 to 1970. In 1969, the first college football national primetime game was broadcast between Mississippi and Alabama. Archie threw for 436 yards and three touchdowns, an SEC record which would not be broken for 43 years. Manning scored 14 touchdowns in 1969 and was named the All-SEC team both in 1969 and 1970. He was fourth in the Heisman voting in 1969. He was third in 1970. In 1969, Archie Manning was the Southeast Conference MVP and was awarded the Walter Camp Memorial Trophy by the Washington, D.C. Touchdown Club. At Ole Miss, a former chancellor said of Archie's playing days, and I quote, Archie, you put on a show. He did just that. He ran everywhere. He threw everywhere, end quote. Manning was drafted second overall in 1971, drafted by the New Orleans Saints. He played 13 years in the NFL, 10 of those with New Orleans. In 1972, Manning led the NFL in passing attempts and completions. Archie was selected to the Pro Bowls in 1978 and 1979 and was named the NFC Player of the Year in 1978. Manning's number 18 jersey has been retired by Ole Miss and the Saints have never reissued his number eight. Archie was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1989. He was one of the 13 inaugural members of the College Football Playoff Committee and currently serves on the chair, as chairman of the National Football Foundation. Archie Manning has always been involved in youth causes, and he was awarded the Silver Buffalo Award from the Boy Scouts of America, the highest award given to the service to youth on a national basis. Tonight, we honor a man who has a storied career and has raised a legendary family. Please watch the video screens. Hey, Dad, just wanted to uh, congratulate you on receiving the Walter Camp Pleasure. Distinguished American Award. I cannot think of a better person, uh, more deserving of this award. I'd also like to thank the committee uh, for the Walter Camp Award for inviting me to speak at my dad's roast. Uh, Dad, you know, I think it's uh, probably a little weird for you to receive an award uh, for someone that you're older than. And so I think uh, it's got to be a little awkward for you. But, um, you know, at this time, I think you'll take any award that you can find. Uh, just joking. Um, again, I hope you'll have a great evening. Dad, congratulations and all the best. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating the 2018 Walter Camp Football Foundation Distinguished American, Mr. Archie Manning. Thanks so much, and um, what, a, what an inspirational night. But, uh, well, I just congratulate the All-American team and all the award recipients tonight, especially Jake and Dave and um, Tony, I appreciate that. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here, and uh, I'm truly honored for the Walter Camp Foundation, the Distinguished American, and also to follow the long list of people who have uh, received uh, this award. It really, it means a lot to me. Um, been a few awards have come my way lately, and um, I was in one in Atlanta and one in Birmingham, and then 
Mobile, and, and my wife knew I was coming to this one. And I got a call the other day about a, something, an award in Houston, and she finally, she, Olivia just said, what's the deal on all these awards? And I said, somebody thinks I'm going to die. <laughs> but I hope not in the, in the near future. Um, I am um, truly blessed to have spent a life, to have had a lifetime association with this great game of football, a sport that has become a part of the fabric of my life and the legacy of our family. My journey in football began probably like some of you in backyards and vacant lots, and um, we probably don't see enough of that anymore with, with youngsters. Also, we don't see any of this, but also on Saturday afternoons alongside my dad, listen to college football games. I'd listen to Ole Miss game, I'd listen to Mississippi State game. We didn't, um, I didn't get to go to a lot of games. My dad and I occasionally would go to junior college games there in, in Mississippi. I can remember when I was a junior in high school, I was invited though to go to Jackson, Mississippi to a college game between Ole Miss and Alabama. And the quarterback for Alabama was Kenny Stabler. And I left the, stab and I left the stadium that day saying, I'm going to learn how to run the option and be a sprint out passer like Kenny Snake Stabler. I, um, high school, finished, uh, weighed 165 pounds. We had 18 players left on our team at the end of our year. My senior year went five and five, but I got three offers. Tulane, Mississippi State, and Ole Miss. I decided to go to Ole Miss, even though they had signed eight other quarterbacks. But I wanted to play for legendary coach Johnny Vault, and I wanted to play quarterback at the school where my hero had played quarterback, and his name was Jake Gibbs. I have to tell you, I cherish my four years at Ole Miss. Um, in those days, this generation doesn't remember that, but um, we played freshman ball. But then I was the starter the next three years for Coach Vault at Ole Miss. I beat out those other eight quarterbacks. We had good teams. Uh, we played in big games. We played in bowl games. And I, it was just great four great years of my life, the friends that I made. I met Olivia there. We've been married 48 years. And and my, um, my teammates there, so many of them are today my best friends and life, lifelong friends. I cherish those days. Now, Coach Saban earlier talked about it, and we, we think about coaches so many times, is how many they win, how many they lose, and so forth. But as you do listen to Coach Saban, you know what an impact coaches have throughout, not just college, high school, throughout, but coaches have on players. And I often tell young players, I say, if you have a coach that you're attached to, and most do, don't ever forget about him. And as years go by, don't forget your coach. And I think an old coach, and there's many here tonight, an old coach will tell you, there's nothing greater than to be here from one of your former players. I always did that with Coach Vault. Coach Vault had a great influence on my life. When I was a sophomore at Ole Miss, I lost my dad. I was going through a lot. Really, the next year I had my best year, so I was getting invited to a lot of big bankers, a lot of things, and I needed parental guidance. And Coach, Coach Vault just uh, gave me great parental advice besides being my head football coach. And I always stayed up with Coach Vault. Now, even though Coach Vault had a heart scare my senior year, didn't even finish the year, he led a great life. Coach Vault lived to be 96 years old. And I kept up with him. We hunted together. We played a lot of golf together. We played a lot of golf together. Now, Coach Vault lost his wife when he was in his 70s. And when he was 84, he remarried. And he married a sweet lady named Eleanor, same age he was. At 89, they got divorced. And it's, uh, I don't think many divorces happened because of this. They got divorced because Eleanor wanted to go to the old folks' home, and Coach Vault said he didn't like to be around old people. <laughs> and so I would line, oftentimes I'd line up our golf game, and he would tell me, I don't want to play with a bunch of old guys. But he lived a great life. When he was 94, he was still playing golf three times a week. But 
at 96, uh, he was struggling. He was in assisted living. So this was really a blessing. He was there in Oxford, where Ole Miss is. Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans, and we went to Oxford and stayed for eight months. Coach Vault was in assisted living, so it was really a blessing. I was getting to go see him three and four times a week. And I, um, he passed away not too long after that. I did a eulogy. I told this story at the eulogy. But while um, he was in assisted living, uh, they moved, because of Hurricane Katrina, they moved a football game in Baton Rouge on Saturday night to a Monday night. It was between Tennessee and LSU. So I went in there on Tuesday morning, and he was at a point, he was okay, but he was at a point where you kind of need to check where he was when you went in there each day. I went in there, I said, Coach, did you see that game last night? He said, no. I said, oh, I wish you had seen it. It was a great game. LSU was up on Tennessee, 21-0. Tennessee fought back, got even. Went to overtime, went to second overtime, and Tennessee beat them in two overtimes. But it was just a great football game. I wish you'd have seen it. And Coach Vaught said, well, Archie, I never gave a damn about either one of those two teams. <laughs> Which I, I knew he was with me uh, <laughs> at, at, at that day. Yes, I uh, entered the NFL as a second pick in the draft, went to the Saints, played a short time with the Oilers, the Vikings. Didn't see the brightest side, pro football, got beat up a little bit, but I enjoyed the journey. I wouldn't swap it for anything. The relationships, the friendships, the, the lessons I learned, dealing with adversity, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't swap it for anything. As a matter of fact, talking about being beat up, uh, two years ago they had the 50th year of the Saints. They invited back 50 players. I was honored to be one of the 50. The night before a home game, a lot of players had come back, they had a reception. I'd had a back fusion, I'd had a knee replacement, I was getting ready to have another knee replacement, and they asked me to come up and say a few words. So I wasn't moving too good up there, and one of, one of my old offensive linemen, he wasn't a very good one, he, uh, <laughs> he, he wasn't there very long. You wouldn't, I, I'd tell you his name, but you never heard of him. Um, <laughs> but I was kind of limping up there, and he said, you want me to just carry you up there? And I said, no, I don't want to be carried, but if you and your buddies had blocked anybody, I wouldn't be in this situation right now. Right now. <laughs> I retired from pro football in 1985, went into business. Also had some opportunities to do some broadcasting, but I said, you know, I think I'm gonna hang around here. We were blessed with three boys and they were playing a lot of different sports. I, th I think I'm gonna hang around there and kind of watch this. Um, I know with people here who um, played high school football, your children played high school football, I think it's one of the great institutions in our country. And Olivia and I both agree, the greatest, and all the, all the years and the joy our children have given us, but all the years we've been involved, the greatest fall we ever had in relation to football was the fall of 1991. Our oldest son, Cooper, was a returning all-state wide receiver. Cooper was the best athlete of the three boys. He was an all-state returning wide receiver. Newman High School in New Orleans, not big time football, 2A football, but his little brother won the quarterback job. Peyton was 15 years old and won the quarterback job. So they played together that year. Newman usually won five. They went, they went nine and one that year. They never made the playoffs. They went deep in the playoffs. Um, Got a lot of attention, as you can imagine, there in New Orleans, but they handled it, got the whole team involved, had a lot of fun with it. And it was fun for the parents, too. One little hiccup, there were two other returning receivers, senior receivers on the team, but Peyton never threw to anybody but Cooper. <laughs> it was really embarrassing. Um, I didn't stick my nose in it. I, I try not to get involved, but Peyton being just a sophomore, well, just one morning at breakfast about the middle of the year, I said, you know, Peyton, really, maybe you ought to spread that ball around a little bit. He said, Dad, Cooper tells me he's open on every single play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Larry's laughing at that. Larry, Larry knows about that. <laughs> High school football, not, nothing like it. Um, Cooper, unfortunately, had a spinal cord injury after signing a college scholarship and had to give it up. Had a great spirit about it, really handled it well. Peyton went on, his, his years at Tennessee were, um, were really fun. They, they accomplished a lot. Um, people at Ole Miss got mad at me because Peyton went to Tennessee, but five years later, Eli bailed me out and he went to Ole Miss. Uh, 
his years at Ole Miss were good. That for the first time they won 10 games in, in 40 years. Uh, Cooper went into business, did well. Peyton with the Colts, they had, they, they really changed the culture of football in the Indianapolis area. It was a, just a fun time up there. Had, had four neck surgeries, thought he was done. Went to Denver and they had four more good years. Uh, Super Bowls, MVPs, really a lot of fun. Eli, 15 years with the New York Giants. Um, couple of Super Bowls, MVP. Last I checked, Eli's still with the New York Giants. <laughs> but uh, we, we were truly blessed. But I got to tell you, as a parent, um, Peyton, Walter Peyton, Man of the Year, Eli and Larry, Cole, Walter Peyton, Man of the Year, that, that means everything to a parent. Um, three buildings that uh, even more proud of any MVP or Super Bowl as a, a gymnasium at Sacred Heart School in New Orleans that my son Cooper and his wife Ellen raised the money for, Peyton Manning Children's Hospital in Indianapolis, Indiana, and the Eli Manning Children's Clinics in Jackson, Mississippi. Yes, and, uh, So in retirement, I've still um, uh, been able to be involved with the game of football. I've been over 25 years. I've member, been a member of the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. Great organization. Very proud to be part of that. It was mentioned earlier, the National Football Foundation. I've been a member over 25 years and served as chairman for the last 11 years. Great chapter right here. And uh, it's a wonderful organization. It's what's right about college football. And as also as mentioned, I'll, I'll tell you one more story, and this is it. Let's sit down. It's been a long night. Um, I got invited to be on the first college football playoff committee. I was honored. It was 13 people. I was truly honored. We, that first year, we met a lot. We had a lot to do to, to make a plan how this thing was going to work. And we met and met and met. And a lot of it was about who was going to be recused and not being biased to your conference. And we kind of had a theme, check your allegiance at the door. Check your allegiance at the door. So. Now the season starts, and Kirk Herbstreet called me one day, and he said, game day is coming to Oxford, Mississippi, Ole Miss, Alabama game. Game day had never been to Oxford. And he said, I want you to be our celebrity picker. I said, Kirk, I can't do it. I'm on the college football playoff committee. I can't talk about teams. I can't talk about players. I can't talk about it. He said, really? I said, we can't do it. He said, well, how's that going to work? I said, it's going to work good. We're going to work. We're going to work hard. We've, meet we've had meetings and meetings. And we're going to have a lot of data. We're going to watch film. And then we're going to go to Dallas seven straight weekends and throw it all up on the wall and pick the top four teams. So more than anything, we're going to be unbiased and we check our allegiance at the door. He said, I don't, I don't see it. He said, you know, like you played in the Southeastern Conference. Your son's played in the Southeastern Conference. I said, nope, nope. We check our allegiance at the door. He said, okay. He said, you know, for ESPN every week, I have to do a, um, I have to pick, my four. I said, who you got? He said, well, I got uh, Oklahoma, Alabama, Oregon, UCLA. I said, those are good. Those are really good teams. I said, now we're getting started going to Dallas, so I'm kind of picking my four every week, too. He said, who you got? I said, I got Alabama, Auburn, LSU, and Ole Miss. <laughs> In conclusion, I can't say it more clearly than this, football matters. Sometimes we apply the word pressure to football. I get it, last second decisions must be made as 300 pound linemen begin their charge, referees stand with whistle in mouth, TV cameras zoom in for millions of fans to inspect each move as the clock ticks down. However, it didn't take long for each week for me to remind my sons and now my grandsons to focus on the fun, to celebrate the joy of playing, the camaraderie of team, knowing that every effort and everyone on that team matters. At the end of the season, you hug your teammates and your coaches goodbye and sometimes put miles between you. But they're never far from your mind and they're always in your heart, forever a connection to home. So whether you stand on the sidelines, cheer from the stands, 
interact on a smartphone, or gather around the television for the national championship. Football is America's game. It's up to us. It's up to us to be realistic, but by no means timid when we imagine and build its future. Thank you again to the Walter Camp Foundation for this heartfelt honor. Thank you very much.